Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and this weekend, my my oldest, he's now 18, you've been with us, if you've been with us since I started this channel, you were back, you were with us when I was throwing baseballs to this kid when he was 12 years old, uh, in the cage every week, several times. Um, he not only graduated this week, but he just committed to play baseball in college. And so, I put this out yesterday I, I I didn't get emotional during the graduation but I almost did when he um, when he was doing his signing ceremony and another funny story is while I'm while we're taking pictures and all after he signed I had three kids from his school that were like freshmen that he didn't know come up and ask me if I was DAI <laughs> that was hilarious they want they said that they heard my voice and that they were listeners was well, that's crazy and my son also had a kid on his baseball team say that he had no they had no idea that I was digital asset investor and they listened to my channel thought that was funny um, but I'm very proud of him and it's been a long road many of you have been here with us thanks for listening and enjoying it um, check this out um, James rule asked uh, Grok about what Grok expects end of 2024 um, he says uh, on the lower end, we have more conservative estimates, with some sources suggesting a minimum 52 cents, maximum 60 cents. On the other hand, there are those that see stars aligning for XRP, predicting a price of $1.35 or even $7.54 by 2025, which would imply a significant increase in 2024. So that's what um, is that's what Grok thinks about things. Then we got this from e Greg Crypto. Gold is wit witnessing a historic close. Should this week's candle close in its current form, it will make the highest weekly candle close ever recorded for gold. Gold is sending a warning. Then we got this. This is um, Freddie Riz was talking about the Ripple versus SEC case on this show. Going here. back to lawsuits specifically, could you give us a very quick summary of what you think or when you think that the uh, Ripple versus the SEC lawsuit might be finished. And then I also saw that the SEC um, filed a Wells notice uh, to the Ethereum Alliance with it. And could you give us a quick overview of what's actually going on there and what you think is going to like play out with those, like both those two cases? Yeah, so with Ripple, we're going to find out the whole lawsuit at the district court level. So this is, you know, before any appeals. It's all going to be over in July, August. We're going to see what's... What I don't want people to sleep on is the, you know, there's still a lot of heavy stakes here because the judge is going to say how much Ripple has to pay in a fine. And, uh, you know, I don't think whatever the number is going to be, I think it's going to be under 25 million, but whatever it is, it's not going to, you know, be killer to Ripple. The, the key thing is, does the judge uh, file or require that there's an injunction against Ripple doing anything that's critical to its business model, which is these ODL? on-demand liquidity program that it has if the judge says you can't do that anymore that's real bad and you know ripple will say they'll keep going forward because they'll say we've changed what you said we can't do and you know it'll just require the sec to sue them again but you know, obviously that's messy dirty it's going to take more time and it kind of depends on how the market's going to react to something like that but if the judge does not have a very serious injunction or, or the injunction is along the lines of everything you did in the past, you can't do anymore now. And I'm not going to write an order about what you've changed and are doing in the future. That's that's the ruling that everybody that's pro crypto wants. And that'll allow you know Ripple to flourish more. And, and who knows, maybe that could spark XRP going. But in any event, you know, that case, Although people can try and say, well, look, we're more like what happened here with how Ripple sold XRP or, or secondary markets. It's just very unique to Ripple and XRP. And so there's not a lot of, it's not zero danger, but there's not a lot of danger for other projects uh, because it's just a one-off case. 
All right. So there's that. And here's Mike Novogratz talking about $45 trillion coming. Um, so I argue. I should say our old buddy, Mike Novogratz, who still has me blocked because I must have said something during ETHgate. Of our counterparties about this a fair amount, uh, the ETH BTC ratio. And the people, remember there was that classic cycle, Bitcoin, then ETH, and then sort of like alt, alt season. And then yeah. I think that idea is silly, but what's I, I, happening this time in your mind? Crypto, Why is that not listen, happening? The crypto universe was small and there was less narratives. Yeah. Right, the narrative was the having, and so that became really important. Yeah. Well, when there are other narratives, it's just part of the narrative. Yeah. Right. Having is not as important anymore. Right. What's important is we're in this adoption cycle. Why does crypto continue to have a high sharp ratio and is going from lower left to upper right? Because we have a macro environment we just talked about, right? Mm -hmm. With gold, silver. Yeah. So for hard assets, it's a very nice environment to be in. And we're still early in the adoption cycle. And we just pulled the giant lever, yeah. which was ETFs and the Wealth Channel. And, and so you had the original excitement around it. Yep. And now it's going to be the Morgan Stanley. Hi, yeah. Mr. Jones, have I talked to you about Bitcoin yet? <laughs> right. Bitcoin is always sold, not bought. Yeah. So you've got to orange pill somebody. It's and, true. And we just, just, just in the last month, turned all the Morgan Stanley RIAs into orange pills. They're pillars. about to, yeah. They're just about to. It's a, hey, and that's they're going to the, do it for the next 10 years. And that's the, I'm pretty sure that's the, what, that's the biggest wealth management platform, I think, oh, by wait, AUM. I, again, I, I picked up MS, Morgan, I'm pretty I sure. Morgan Stanley, but. I think they're the biggest. But they're, there's $45 trillion managed yeah. by RIAs of baby boomer wealth. Yeah. That's a lot of Bud Fox. Have yeah. I spoken to you about the opportunities in Bitcoin? <laughs> I don't even need to talk about Satoshi's white paper or right. the Persian, you know, the Byzantine generals. Yeah. Uh, double spend. None of that. None of that needs to be spoken about ever again. That was Mike Nover at circa 2014. Yeah. Trying to act like a computer science guy. <laughs> now it's just Bitcoin is digital gold. So when you, when you talk to me, think. is it work? Okay. Um, so, and then here's a, boy, if this guy is not talking about what sounds like um, what XRP represents, listen to this. Oh. Uh, no, I would agree because we haven't yet made the jump where there is institutional buy-in. Uh, and I like to use the example, if uh, the Bank of Mitsubishi in Toko, Tokyo needs to transfer $100 million worth of yen to the New York branch and convert it to dollars, you need $100 million worth of yen in Tokyo and $100 million worth of dollars in New York. You're tying up $200 million in capital. If you can attach that to a coin, it's simultaneously so the bank frees up half the capital. That's a big deal. But we haven't made that jump yet. Yeah, but it, it looks like it's coming, doesn't it? I think so. Okay, yeah. Uh, the jump, the, uh, what do they call it in Star Wars? The jump to hyperspace? Is that, that what it was called? Look, Chris Giancarlo was on um, Fox Biz, and my computer is trying to freeze up on me. Let's see if we can get this thing going. Might, we might be ready for a restart on the computer. All right, let's check this out. Former President Donald Trump sparking excitement in the crypto world last week after announcing that he would embrace the use of cryptocurrency if he is elected in November. Crypto participants took uh, to X to share their optimism that Trump could help propel the industry forward. But my next guest says Trump already laid the groundwork for crypto to go mainstream, and he did that during his first year in office. Bitcoin right now, 67,000. It is up sharply today. Joining us now in another Fox Business Exclusive is Chris Giancarlo, who served as chairman of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission during the Trump presidency. He is also the author of the book, Crypto Dad. Thanks for joining us. Wonderful to be with you, Lauren, thank you. So um, it seems like you think President Trump is better for cryptocurrency than President Biden. I guess the question is why is president so bad? President Biden so bad for crypto? Well, you know, presidents get credit for when things go right during their mm -hmm. administration, and they get criticized when things go badly. Boy, this guy, he knows how to ride the fence. The fact of the matter is, during the very first year of the Trump administration, the U.S. Commodity Futures Tra Trading Commission greenlighted the world's first regulated market for any type of crypto derivatives. This was mm -hmm. Bitcoin futures. And the United States' first regulated market for any type of crypto. Six years later, that marketplace is deep, it's liquid, it's transparent, and it's very well regulated and relatively free of fraud and manipulation. In fact, of all Sam Bankman's empire, the one piece that didn't fail 
was the piece under CFTC regulation. So what the CFTC did under that first year of the Trump administration demonstrated that American regulators, in fact, regulators anywhere in the world, can engage successfully with crypto, can put regulatory regimes in place about crypto, and can do it successfully. And so I think that uh, as a president under whose watch this occurred, credit is due. And what has happened now? Well, in the last really 24 months, we've seen a real, I'd say, almost regression uh, in, in, in sort of the left wing of the Democrat Party. It's not across the board. There's a lot of very strong Democrats in favor of smart crypto regulation. But, you know, Elizabeth Warren and others have declared war on crypto. They say they're going to assemble an anti-crypto army. Mm -hmm. And I think that's frozen innovation in place here in the United States because of the regulatory uncertainty. And what we're seeing is a lot of smart innovators, innovators that want to do the right thing, are moving offshore and innovating in other places mm. rather than here in the United States. Where, where is offshore specific? Okay, we're not going to watch the rest of that, but they are about to, my understanding is that they're going to be vo voting on this Fit for 21st Century Act here soon. This is uh, Representative Wiley Nickel. For good examples of, of bipartisan cooperation, our work in the House Financial Services Committee on digital assets is just that. Uh, this bill, the Fit for the 21st Century Act, uh, the, the first ever you know uh, regulatory structure for uh, digital assets, is coming to the floor for a vote next week. Uh, I was part of a group of six Democrats who, who worked with my Republican colleagues in committee to move this bill. Uh, similar group of uh, Democrats in the Ag Committee as well. So we're going to get a vote next week. I'm very very excited because uh, we, we are operating on a hundred year old security law, securities law for this industry and we need to, to get regulations in place, we need to protect consumers and that's what this bill does. All right, so there's that. Looks like Gary Gensler has lost his policy director, the SEC policy director Heather Slavkin um, will leave the agency so he's having to replace her. It's, Pretty interesting timing after uh, he and Elizabeth Warren are, are being attacked left and right now by the people in Congress and everybody in crypto. Uh, everybody's had enough of them, and now he's losing people. And John Deaton has has a response. Everybody is John Deaton. You know, I saw a post by a senator. Not a response, but he's got a comment on Senator Warren. And that bragged about how much better the economy's getting. And I was trying to figure out who she was talking about. And then I read her last bill and I realized it's the bankers. She's become the number one banking lobbyist in the United States of America. The same person who promised to go hold the bankers accountable. Go to John Deaton for Senate.com if you want to clean up Washington. There you go. Um, then we've got uh, this. Kraken is actively reviewing plans that may include removing support for Tether. And what this relates to is the, um, I believe the MICA regulations in Europe are gonna cut those new rules are gonna come into effect in July. And Tether says they're planning to continue having a dialogue with the regulators. But I think in the past they've said that they, um, that they weren't worried about being regulated by Europe or whatever. Okay, so, um, in the group today in DAIXRP.com, we're going to talk about this uh, Jake Donahue guy. He's the one that was going on the, um, he was going to go on this show. Now, I haven't seen the show yet, but he was going to go over um, a bunch of the, the crypto scams that have gone on. And he said that he might even talk about the Phoenix Fire Token scam. Now, I was not really plugged in when, when all that was going on um, to what all happened um, but this guy is apparently gonna do, he says right here he's gonna be writing about the because he said it's one of the uh, one of the particularly egregious even by crypto scam standards so he's gonna be writing about it now a couple of things one I know for a fact when this thing was going on I remember Brad Combs was approached by the guys that created this to be like one of the influencers involved and the guy that was the creator was talking to Brad to try to get me and Brad involved. And we both, you know, we don't promote tokens for money anyway. So, because even if it's technically legal, it's not, it's not very ethical if you're doing it and you're not telling people that you're being paid or 
or that you've been paid in a token or that or that or even it's not even ethical if you are buying into one of these things um, before it go buying into them and getting the benefit of being given a bunch of tokens for cheap so that you'll talk about it even if you're buying them to me that's extremely unethical too if you're not letting people know what you did um, because ultimately you'd be dumping the tokens well I don't know exactly who's involved. I know that I know that the the, the creator told Brad Combs who was involved, who he who he had in his corner that was going to be promoting it from the beginning. I I don't remember all those names, but I know that Brad he told Brad the list. He gave him a list of people that were involved that had already agreed to be involved. But there's also a guy out there, and I don't remember what his name is, but he has an entire file on this thing. And has video. I'm talking about video files and all this. And I don't know if he's. I would. I would imagine he's in touch with this guy by now. But in daixrp.com, I mean, we're going to talk. I'm going to show you a couple of things I have seen on this. A couple of videos that where you places you can go to see kind of what was going on. And I'm going to show you a little bit of that. But first, I'm going to show you this guy that he's that he's interviewing with. That he's going to be interviewing with. And he does, by the way, have a book. This Jake Donahue has a crypto confidential book. I don't know if the Phoenix Fire Token is discussed in that book, but he said he's going to be writing about it. So, the, but we know th there's guys that have all kinds of um, information. So anyway, I've had people ask me what what is that thing all about. So I'm going to show you a little bit of that in DAIXRP. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family that away we go. 